Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and this is a tutorial to show you how to make the cup for our um, teacup pig. So let's just take the piggy out for a minute so I can show you a little bit better. So it's completely needle felted using The Makers structural core um, and you will um, make the main shape of the cup then you will make the handle and also uh, the little base where the cup sits on and um, you can decorate it like a, a proper china cup or however you want to decorate it that's entirely up to you um, it's quite a sturdy um, fabric so it's it's definitely worth using the structural core and of course if you're one of our subscribers then you have this as an exclusive tutorial uh, with your May 2023 subscription box the teacup pig right the pig's going there on his own for the moment um, and I'm going to uh, keep the cup here now what you will need which uh, obviously comes in your subscription box is the felt um, sheet that's a structural core felt sheet you also have the instructions in there which most importantly you've got the template now this is a really important template because that is what you need to transfer onto your structural core felt piece now I did this by cutting um, by using some tracing paper then cutting uh, the tracing paper out and then uh, putting it onto the felt sheet and then drawing around the felt sheet with a soft pencil and um, there are other ways that you could do it of course you can take a photocopy of the um, template and cut out or many many other ways um, you probably got other ideas as well you can pin it onto the felt sheet and cut it without drawing around it so there are many ways of how you would like to do it but I have done it this way and so all I'm, I need to do now is I need to cut out the template shape um, here so that it um, it makes the um, cup. Now um, these little scissors that I'm using, we, we actually do sell them, I don't know if we've got them in stock at the moment, but they're quite useful and there's the uh, structural core felt is actually really easy to cut. Um, so we, we had a different type before which was much harder to cut, but this one is uh, is definitely easy to cut. It's, um, it's made in the UK for us, um, so it's a structural core felt. And um, you should be able just to cut around the outside of um, the template. And then we're going to do a little bit of needle felting. So you will need your uh, white, natural white New Zealand uh, merino wool. And uh, you will also need um, a coarse felting needle. If you have got any multi-tools, they might come in handy, but uh, they're not necessary. They're just a nice to have, and especially if you want to speed up your work a little bit. Um, I must say these scissors are really, really good. All, all of the scissors that we sell, they're, they're usually sort of on the smaller side, but they're very good for cutting um, even tough stuff like this core felt. And um, if you find sort of bits of vegetable matter in there, it just goes to show that it's made from sheep wool, so it's all good. Um, here we go. Now this felt, it has a little bit of dust, but it's nothing as bad as what our previous felt used to have. So you should be able to just mash, uh, cut it without a mask on. And um, this is all um, waste pieces of felt. So you can either put them in the bin or think so of something else to do. Now the idea is that we are folding each shape in towards the other to create this round cup, right? That's the idea. So we need to felt these parts together as, as if you you were stitching them so if you imagine you had a um, sewing needle and thread and you could just stitch them together now I've mislaid my felting mat but it's somewhere here I know it is ah it's right up there um, of course I'm using our um, lovely earth mat and um, you need the white wool as I said and a coarse felting needle. Now I'm using a white tipped coarse felting needle and um, all you're going to do is you're going to tease off strands of wool, fasten them into one of these flaps if you like into the center and then pull the um, flap inward and then fasten it down into the center of the other one. And um, as soon as you do that you sort of keep a tension on there so it's literally as if you're putting a thread across um, the, uh, the one flap to the other flap and uh, you're gonna have to work all your way up the flap and then you're gonna have to work your way 
um, around every single flap. So as this might take a little while, <coughs> um, I might, um, I don't know how long this will take. Let's just see how quickly I can do this. I might be able to cut a few corners, though I don't want you to do that at home, of course, because you do need to make that a nice firm um, construct. But this is by no means um, completely uh, finished the construct yet because uh, you're going to cover all of it, the inside and the outside, with a white wool. So let's let's just do this and take the time it takes. You, when you watch this later, you can always fast forward, um, obviously. So wherever the markings are of the pen, they um, they can be outside or inside. You will not see it later because you're literally covering the whole shape. So I'm working my way up, fastening it into one and then into the other side. Trying to work as, as neat as I can. Um, the main thing is that when you come up, uh, together at the top, make sure that you have you don't have a lip there so that it's exactly the same um, distance. And um, you can, of course, always go over it again. So move your cup around however it's needed to get um, the two sides fused together. And then I'm going to work my way around the other side. Now for the teacup pick, if you make the whole project, we um, advise you to take a little bit of the white wool and put a bit to one side in case you get carried away and you use all of it on the, on the cup, because you will need a little bit for the teacup pig to put into um, the inside of the ear at the very end. That's the only um, bit that you might need to use the white for. So I'm just telling you this now, but you might be watching this anytime in the future because you desperately want a needle felt a china cup. Um, who knows why? So for one thing, it doesn't break, so that's always good. And um, and you can make it any size you want and uh, you can decorate it with whatever you want. So maybe you want to make a nice um, anniversary mug, uh, maybe something for somebody's wedding day or uh, maybe just like collecting china cups and you haven't got a felted one yet. Um, whatever your reason is to make this mug other than using it for the teacup pig, um, that's entirely up to you. These tutorials are there for you to use however you would like to use them. Right, that's two sides together now. Now in the instructions it tells you that when you have all the sides together that you're overlaying parts with the wool. And I'm going to do this now already just to show you where you're heading and you can do this now already too. So you're adding more of the white wool so that late in a minute it overlaps so you're adding it to the inside so I'm just doing it on these bits here and this is where you might find a multi-tool useful so if you have a three needle felting tool whether it's the the oh no that's a pen <laughs> the clover um, or the um, oh that's got bent needles in there or oh, my my nice needle tools are all at the other end of the desk of course they would be why would they be here come on there must be one I might grab one. Oh, there's a blue one here. So uh, whether you've got the clover one or the uh, blue um, non-branded one, just use it to speed your work out, out, up if you wish. And of course, the five needle felting clover tool will work beautifully here as well. And I probably will grab that one. I can see it. So I'm going to just reach across and get it. Right, here we go. So that will help you to get the wool felted down a little bit faster if you have it to hand. Otherwise, you will have to use your um, single needle felting needle for the lot. Now, um, obviously, I've now joined this. So then I want to overlay the wool so that it goes over this um, one of these flaps. And bit by bit, you will make the surface one into one and it will be nice and curved, just like you want your china mug to uh, look like. It just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of stabbing. Um, I'm rushing it, you don't need to. Just take your time and enjoy the process. And um, the first thing you do is you almost sort of tack the sides together so that you can then overlay them with um, more, um, more generous amounts of the white wool. Right, so that, that I've jumped ahead a couple of steps. This is what you normally do when all of them are joined together. But I'm going to work my way around, go back to the basics, strand of wool, 
you, you can't start at the top. It doesn't have to be at some point. You can't see it anymore because I'm going inside the cup. So that was quite good to actually show you what you have to do um, when when it's all joined together, because it's going to be hard for you to see inside the cup whilst I have to lie it down to felt it into place. So this time I started at the top, which is also possible, and then work your way down to the base. As long as they're nice and close together, it doesn't matter if you start at the top or at the base. It might get a little bit crowded inside the cup when all the um, sides have been felted together. So at the moment it looks really quite weird from the outside because uh, um, the wool obviously is coming through but um, also you see these joints. Don't worry about um, these for one second. It will all completely disappear once you've got um, the cup covered with um, with all of the wool. So just work in small steps and trust the process and the template. And just between you and me, I haven't actually been that precise cutting the template out. I don't think it matters. This is the beauty about working with wool. It's not actually that precise, um, at least not at this stage. So don't um, worry too much if it's um, if, if you've kind of, I don't know, cut a little bit wonky, which is what I did. Um, it's always hard to work that precise with felt anyway, especially when it's thick felt like this. So please um, don't worry about it. It will all come together, literally come together fine. Stubbing that down. There. And I've got two more flaps to close up. So I'm going to do that and then I'll color it in from the inside with a white wool. And, um, and then we um, go on to the next step. So it does get quite crowded inside this cup, um, you, which, which will mean that you have to sort of work in quite a small space. Um, like I say, you can't even see what I'm doing now because of, of that um, crowdedness inside the cup. Um, so uh, apologies for that. But if you're making a long, then um, at least you know what to expect. And of course you can, as I said earlier, you can always stop the whole thing and watch it at your own leisure whenever you want to. I'm planning to make a lot more um, tutorials, technical tutorials over the summer. So watch out for that um, because we do have uh, quite a lot of updates on some of our products. We've got new tools, new everything that um, we need to um, probably show you a little bit more in detail of how to do this. These will be um, instructional tutorials, so they won't be live streams or um, anything like this, they will be far more targeted and um, also a lot shorter. Now I don't know how quickly I can make this cup but I try my best to be fast. So I've now got the inside still just tacked and I've, I've um, skipped a few steps and then I, um, as you saw me do it this part here, I've already started to cover with woolly um, overlays. So remember the overlay, it goes inside the cup like this, it needs to spread out um, onto the bit that you felt it down before. Or if this is the first one, spread it out so that you can overlay the next batch of wool and um, felt it down. Ignore the rim of the cup at the moment. We're going to sort this out in a minute. And if you have got a multi tool, get it in there to stab it down a little bit faster. And just going to bridge that gap here a little bit. Um, it will all eventually hold together with wool and of course you've got that nice sturdy base with a basic core wool so that um, that will work as well right here we go so um, if it um, pulls apart a little bit you can quite easily stab that close together by just stabbing the wool in a bit more again um, it will have just pulled off a little bit and that's fine. So with these layers that you put on the inside of the cup, all of that will um, be resolved. So you shouldn't have any um, any wool pulling away once that has been firmly felted down. As I say, it just takes a little time to do it. But then you end up with a lovely teacup. I'm going to have a lovely tea in a minute. I've got my cup here at the ready. Admittedly not in a felt cup. I don't recommend pouring tea into a felt cup. Um, so yes. So we're just filling in the sides at the moment. Not, not the bottom yet. You just leave that as it is for now. 
filling in the sides and making sure that they close up nicely together. This one's come apart a little bit. I suppose if it comes apart, there's nothing stopping you because it's hard to get on the inside, I'm improvising this, um, is to put a strand on the outside as well. So if that helps you because it gets a little bit crowded on the inside, just felt it down on the outside because all of this, again, will be covered with uh, another wool layer. So if it helps you to do that, you just have to mind your fingers um, when you felt into space, basically, which is what you're doing, felting into space. So keep your fingers out of the way. But if it helps you to pull the sides together to uh, make them join up, then you can do that, of course. Right, working my way around still, going into the inside of the cup. And I'm really sorry that I can't show you this in the camera because it's all hidden away. I can barely see it myself. Here we go. If you watch this at any time in the future, way after our um, teacup Makers Box May 2023, then um, and and we don't sell this product on our website, we always have the PDF instructions available to purchase so that you can, if nothing else, you can buy those and then buy the materials separately. Um, because you might, for this particular project, it's probably quite good to have um, PDF instructions so that you end up with that template for the cup. Unless you're very clever and you can draw one up yourself. Um, but it is the New Zealand Merino that we're using, um, which is a really lovely um, wool to work with. It's very even in, in fiber length, so you don't get long and short fibers all mixed together. And it has got a really nice, um, soft um, finish overall. It makes quite a smooth felt, So I'm trying to say. Okay, nearly there. I think. I think I'm pretty much done the inside, albeit a little bit messy, but I just want to move on to the next step. So this is now the cup. Um, obviously the, the base of it is currently uncovered, so I'm going to now cover the base with the white as well. That should be a lot easier and I'm going to use my multi-tool for that. So that fills, um, the, the inside is by no means finished because you might have to go over it again. I'm just spreading that out so it comes up the side so it's not doesn't create a join and it looks nice and even now the inside you're not going to see so much if you put the pig inside anyway but we do want to pay a little bit more attention to the outside especially as we're decorating that with the uh, with a with a painting on it so to speak with a wool painting onto it you definitely need, need a lot of stabbing power so um, make sure you're well sustained before you embark on this project. Um, so now the cup is here. It's not the neatest job. I think it's probably done much neater in the instructions, but that is because I'm rushing it. Um, you can still make adjustments. As always with needle felting, there's never um, a time when you can't make adjustments. The main thing is that we now need to cover the outside. So. Similarly to what you've done on the inside, you're now going to do this on the outside. I'm just going to double check that I'm actually correct. Yes, that's right. And um, I think we're going to put the rim on first. So we're not going to do the outside. We're going to neaten up the edges at the top first. And to do this, you take the wool, um, take a wool strand, felt it down on the edge. It's another chance to pull these sides closer together. Felt them down, felt them down, felt them down. And then you're going to felt them over and felt them down. So that's the idea that you are creating a neat edge on top of the cup. I don't know who who likes drinking out of certain cups. I, I'm such a... Um, a cup snob when it comes to drinking tea and also coffee I actually only like my tea out of really thin china cups um, and they have to be a certain shape I don't I like drinking out of uh, like this one here is perfect look this is my perfect shape for it's nice and thin it's a china mug um, it's a good quality actually and um, it's all it's like a cylinder so all, all the same size I don't like it when they go narrow at the bottom and broad at the wide or when they bulge out like a flower vase so anyway I'm going to drink something now
gone. Yoo-hoo! Are you one of those drinkers that keeps a little bit in the... Always a bit left in the mug? I'm not. I'll drink it to the last drop if I can. Um, some people always have a little bit left. And then you have to say, have you finished with this? And it's like, yes, I have finished, but there's like, still loads left. No, that's fine. You can take it. Um, right, let's repeat this on on all of these um, joints here and across the top, felt the wool down and then fold it, fold it over the edge like this, felt it down, mind your fingers, this is a bit of a treacherous finger project, so make sure you don't have your fingers in the way and get that down as well. At the moment, we're still, we've still got all this white wool left. I'm not suggesting but for one minute it will all be used, but it could potentially all be used because if you look at the finished cup and my cup, there's quite a lot of wool that still needs to be added. So you can um, see where, where all this wool is gonna go. It's gonna build up the layers and you want it nice and sturdy so that the shape is uh, indestructible, unlike real China cups. Um, done. I do like um, pigs, I really do. I think we've, we've sort of, we learn more and more about how intelligent they are and um, people keep even keep them as a pet. However, I would not suggest to keep your pet in this teacup, so don't get tempted to do that. I don't really know where the expression teacup pig comes from. You see lots of photos. I don't know whether it is because they're small enough to fit inside a teacup or whether there is a deeper meaning to it, I'd be very interested. I have actually no idea. Why is it? Why? Why do we find photos of pigs in teacups? It's quite an interesting concept because you don't put anything else into a teacup. But it seems to be a teacup pig seems to be um, commonly known. So I'd be interested to find out why why that is. I don't know. I, I will research it after um, this video. So start on the inside. Put the wool down and then fold it over the edge and felt it down on the outside. Get it all established first, then fold it over the outside and felt it down as well. You can, I'm sort of going at a shallow angle towards um, the base of the cup to felt it down because um, that helps me to hold it with one hand but also not stub myself. Um, so I think it's a constant back and forth at this point. Um, add wool, felt it down, add wool, felt it down. And remember in the direction of your needle is uh, the direction of where the, the wool will shrink towards. So if you need to close a gap up, you can do this also by just stabbing into it like this from an angle. If, it, if, if you haven't managed to do it with the wool um, strips you can still do it by just doing this as well because of course the felt and uh, the structural felt is also wool so the, the fibers will get um, felted together that way too um, at a shallow angle and then working your way into the direction where you want the reduction to take place so wherever you stub the needle is where you are shrinking the wool where you are felting the wool and um, that will also, even at this point, it doesn't say it in the instructions, I'm making this up as I'm going along, um, which is the beauty about needle felting, that there's many, many tips and tricks that um, you can add into any project and everybody has got different ideas as well. Right, nearly there, nearly there. Just a couple more um, to do here. I didn't do such a great job joining this, so I'm gonna do this, i do a quick fix here first and pull that across to close that gap up a little bit more and then I'm going to put the rim on next. So you can see that the pencil mark that was on the felt is actually slowly but surely disappearing altogether. and it is always important work in small 
quantities. So don't go with big lumps of wool that you literally have to fight to get down. And then um, it's it's become so uncontrollable that you have to pull it all off or um, worse still, it doesn't can't pull it off, you have to cut it off. So it's much, much easier to work in small batches and then add more um, as and where you need it. And because it's a felt cup, um, if it looks a little bit out of shape, you have so many opportunities to make it shapely by even later on by pulling it and adding wool into the right place to uh, create the shape that you want to create. But I think going in at a shallow angle at this point is a good idea. So inside first and then on the outside actually quite satisfying so if you if you have um, a little bit of time where you just need to do a little bit of um, stabbing where you don't have to think too much I think this is a good project to do that just a you know sometimes you have you do work where you don't want to think a lot you just literally want to sit down and do a, a bit of work not too much um, concentration just to calm yourself Maybe you've had a stressful day, maybe you've had a fallout with somebody, maybe you just need to relax for a bit and um, and make sure you've got the time to do it. So don't do it if you're feeling rushed because this is not um, the project to do when you're under a great time pressure. Um, just chill, chill, take it easy and just get it done. Next bit down and then nearly full of done a full round. And then the next thing I'm going to do is um, cover it on the outside, which is the important part. This is the bit that you're going to see uh, when your teacup pig sits inside the teacup. So you want to make sure that it's the neater um, side if, if, you, if you have to have a neat one and not so neat one. They can both be very neat inside and outside. I really can't wait to see all these teacups um, being made and maybe um, and also to see what decoration you put on there because you, you don't have to put a decoration on there that's just an abstract pattern. You can write a name on there, you can um, personalize it um, as a, so that might be a good idea to make a birthday mug for somebody. You can still fill it with um, things, it doesn't have to have a pig sitting in there. It could be filled with chocolates and sweets maybe only the wrapped version um, it could be I don't know maybe a little a little jewelry teacup on a dresser put your um, rings and um, um, bracelets in maybe um, maybe it could be what else could you use it for um, what else can you put in there I'm having a little think now hopefully you will have a little think as well and if you've got any idea let us know because um, we're always interested in these um, albeit totally unimportant pieces of information but they're fun nevertheless I suppose you could put your multi tools inside yes needle felting um, tool depositor um, you could have your scissors in there small scissors maybe makeup you could have your mascara stick in there and um, yeah so that that might be quite nice a little cup um, so it could be quite a, a, a utilitarian practical needle felted item for change not not just decorative but also it has a purpose um, other than pouring your tea and coffee into it you could of course needle felt a coffee into it or a cappuccino or a tea um, that would be fun, a whole, a whole needle felted um, um, cappuccino or um, macchiato or whatever they call them, latte, maybe just a good old English cup of tea. Um, so, so you can see that it's now becoming a lot more sturdy. So the rim here still needs some work doing, but it's getting there. And of course, the more you stub it, the firmer it will become and the thinner. So if it's really important to you have a thin edge, then keep stubbing, keep stubbing, don't, don't stop. <coughs> so I'm using still just my coarse needle and I've opted to go for my five needle clover tool. Um, but of course, if you've got a three needle felting tool, you can use that too. 
works really well, especially on our earth mat. Um, I don't think the um, seven needle felting tool is um, the best one to use on this. It pr will probably just bounce off, but I'm very happy to try it. I've got that here as well. Yeah, it's too it's too solid. It won't go through. So the Clover needle felting tool once again has proven to be quite um, useful. I would have thought that you can also use the six um, needle mobile tool in the metal case. I don't have it here, I don't think. So no, I don't have it here. Um, but I'm pretty certain you can use that too. Okay. Just going over this again a bit more. And of course, now you're going to have to cover the outside. Just checking that I'm on track with the instructions. Um, so we have done uh, the, um, we've done the the neat the neat rim then we're going to uh, covering the outside of the cup and um, and then we're making the base and then we're making the handle so we're getting there slowly but surely so to cover the outside um, lay the wool over it again so that you lay it over the gap because that's obviously something that you really need to um, cover well and uh, join together well stab it in and I've I've overlaid it a little bit on the on the rim again, so I can stop that in as well again, so it joins it all together, because that that the join goes all along the cup, obviously. And it just works really well to go in at a slight angle. That is also away from your fingers. Then, Let's see if I can use my. Yeah, I can get in there with, with that as well. So I'm stabbing into nothingness, so it does actually come out at the other end. So don't have your fingers in that place. That wouldn't be much fun. And um, you can go over it again on the inside because you're sort of stabbing the wall out again. So just stab it the other way again, and in, in, in the process it gets felted closer together. And then work your way around it. So these are all sort of experiments that I'm doing that might be useful to know for you what you can actually do. Cover the join with the wool. You can also go that way. Um, it doesn't stipulate which way um, to go in the instructions. It just says cover it. But make sure the wool overlays to the batch on the batch before. Um, because that it's like brick laying. You always have them sort of sitting slightly um, offset to each other, so that makes sure that they um, create a stronger um, join, and that will hopefully keep this join together. It's definitely a lot of stabbing, so if you if you fancy doing it and you want to do it in one sitting, allow enough time, and now and now allow enough stabbing power and get it done. Adjusting this from the outside now. And even with my three needle felting tool, tool I'm going in at a shallow angle. Inside, outside, and over the top. There. Next join, so that's now two joints covered up. A bit more here. And of course, you can always add more. It is really, really essential to keep your fingers out of the way. You can just see this happening. Somebody goes straight into their finger when you have to hold it up and stab into the inside of the cup and you don't know quite where to put your fingers. Um, next one. Such a nice noise. I love that noise when the needle pierces into the wool and it just sort of holds it all together. Such a magic craft. <clears throat> the idea is that um, your cup is sort of slightly rounded. Um, I sort of noticed that my cup is getting slightly um, wider at the top. That is because the edges, I haven't felted them quite neatly together. I can probably still make adjustments, 
by getting them really close together. But actually, I do quite like a cup that um, has a slightly, it's a flatter cup, but with a slightly uh, wider top. So if that is what you like, you can do that too. The pig will doesn't mind what it's sitting in. If you're doing this for your piggy. And so I'm just adjusting the, um, the, the rim a little bit because I think uh, it's come apart a bit at the top. So we're getting that felted closer in together to make that uh, bridge that gap. If you can hear children noises, voices, it's because I'm doing this um, a video from my home studio, which of course I'm based at, in the wilderness center in the Forest of Dean, and um, um, it regularly um, hosts uh, school groups to come here and learn all about the outdoors and um, and the things that um, um, are are important to to children and uh, what happens in nature. So um, that's where I am. Okay, so I've got um, a couple more of these gaps to bridge. Just working over old. Um, areas that I've already felt it down. This is the thing with needle felting, always going over it over and over and over and over and over and over it again. It just never seems to to stop. So I've got um, one, two, three more batches to add to my cup to make sure that um, all those seams are closed up and I have actually got quite a lot of wool left still. So again, you can use a lot more in the making of this cup. Felt it down more um, and denser and um, yeah get it all get it all down get it all down it would be good to get some feedback on each project that um, you're making from our tutorials we're always happy to receive your email um, comments so it's info at the makers with two s's dot co dot uk let us know what you think to our uh, tutorials to maybe our subscription boxes all feedback is always welcome is always welcome and um, it often leads to us um, thinking about things a little bit more and maybe even making some changes if they're required but it certainly is sometimes also just nice food for the soul if you think that it's all wonderful we do like that feedback as well so don't hold back because um, we all live off feedback we're all interacting with each other all the time and it's nice to hear when you find out what people think of um, some of the work where you've put a lot of effort into it. Um, yeah, right, I'm gonna go down the bottom a bit because that's getting quite rounded and I need a, a nice solid base. Uh -huh. And two more now. Gosh, my arm is definitely getting tired and I felt a lot, but it is a, it is quite, I'm gonna go sideways now for a change, okay? We haven't done that yet, so I'm putting the wool down from side to side rather than from top to bottom just for a change up get that wool felted in at the top first has anybody ever got blisters from needle felting have you ever needle felted so much that you started to get blisters on your fingers that'd be interesting i don't think that's ever happened to me but i, I feel like look my fingers i'm gripping it so tight because there's so much stabbing to do that um, I could imagine if I did this for another hour or so, it might um, it might get that way in terms of blisters. But for the time being, all good. Okay. Last one, and then we move on to another part of the cup. There's really no short way of doing this. It has to be done this way um, I can't I couldn't have worked in smaller stages without making two or three cups which I didn't particularly fancy so you're gonna have to sit through this with me right next batch of wool and then this is the final gap I've got to fill felt that down as well so you felt it over the seam 
so to make sure that that is that's the main thing we want to do is get rid of these seams and um, if you can notice I've pulled it quite taut the, I felt it on at the bottom and then pull it quite taut as I have pulled it across the rim um, to to sort of cover the whole of the cup now the instructions might not tell you to do that but use your common sense use what is required it's always um, there's always more that you can read between the lines and all of the instructions and of course if you have needle felted before you might have completely different ideas of how to do it now this looks actually quite good I'm quite pleased with it um, you can always tell if there's a gap because there's a little bit of light shines through it believe it or not I can see a little bit of light shining through um, some of the bits so either add more wool or uh, felt it down closer together where the gaps are either way um, the challenge is to keep your fingers out of the way so if, if that is a concern um, to you then maybe just put up with it being slightly apart and just cover it with more wool but you can kind of get these gaps bridged a bit more by stabbing into it from one side of the gap into the other and and see how the cup's doing. Ooh, there's a bit of a gap there as well. Maybe if you cut the uh, piece of felt really precisely out, that was my finger, then um, you might not end up with the problem that I have now. Only a minor problem. I'm going to leave it now. Right, so um, yes, you can work more on this cup. Yes, you can neaten it out more. Yes, you can add more wool. Yes, you can build more layers. Yes, you can make it thinner by stabbing it more. All of that, all of that, all of that. You can shape it more in the process as well. Um, but I want to move on to the next step. Otherwise, I'll be here for hours. And um, so once you've done um, what I have done here, you're going to use a separate piece of wool um, which is going to be this part here that I'm doing now and you're going to turn this into a little disc shape and you're doing this um, so we, we recommend you use an 8 by 9 centimeter diameter piece of wool remember you've got your in, um, centimeter measure on the outside of um, the um, instruction I'm sort of going by eye here at the moment and then you begin felting this um, down into a flat piece basically fold the insides in have them all come together in the middle and you're working um, towards a um, flatten um, the diameter uh, will reduce to six centimeters so flatten it down to start with okay but remember when you do something flat on your mat you always have to lift it off then work on the other side now you're trying to keep the middle a little bit fatter than the edges because that middle part needs to go onto the center of the cup and it will uh, be flattened that way so you don't want a curved um, base you well you want a curved base but not not the way you think of it you want it so that it's like slightly curved that way so you've got thinner edges nice thin edges for the edge of the um, base or the foot of the cup <coughs> So felt it down and keep the inside of that shape a little bit bulged and just make sure that the edges are nice and neat. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> too much fluff. How has everybody's hay fever been? <coughs> of course, when I refer to this, I'm talking about May 2023. <coughs> And it did come with a vengeance, the hay fever. Not that this is hay fever right now. I just... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Oh, I know what you can make with that cup. You can make a whole pincushion cup. I use these all the time, um, except they're china. So my, my cup looks a little bit like that. Um, I use them, like I say, I use them all the time to keep my needles and other paraphernalia in there. <clears throat> you can find that tutorial for this on our YouTube channel of how to make a teacup. 
scene but um, obviously if you want a needle felt a teacup as well as well as the scene better still so can you see how I'm making this into an, um, a shape so that it's slightly more bulged at the top than at the bottom and I'm trying to sort of neaten the edge up a bit <clears throat> doesn't need to look like porcelain or china which is virtually impossible with with wool but we can try the other way you could do it is you could felt it really really solid and then cut the edge to make a nice um, neat crisp edge or just keep felting it as I'm doing right imagine that's all nicely neatly felted you're now going to turn your cup upside down put the um, the bit you've just felted on the top and then stub into the middle so this is getting the slightly bulged part stabbed into the middle which will curve this in a little bit and that's perfect because that is a good base for the cup to stand on it's always better if something is slightly curved inward um, to stand on than the other way around so that is now standing on it quite solidly there okay um, you can also go around the edges a little bit and neaten it out a bit felt it down a bit more but you do have a nice um, base here especially if it's curved inward now can you see that sort of slight dent and then all that is um, remains to complete the cup without the decoration at the moment is to use the template um, you um, sorry use the structural core that comes in the in the box which is um, a strip of wool and you're actually going to shorten this um, to 13 centimeters which is that and um, <clears throat> and by 1.5 centimeters so at the moment it is about three centimeters so you want to cut almost half of it off again there that's another bit of waste and then you're going to take the white wool um, so that you've got about um, 15 centimeter long <clears throat> wool and you're going to wrap the whole shape up really tightly in it Okay, so um, you want that to exceed the felt piece so that's why it's sorry 15 centimeters wide so you want that to exceed the felt sheet because the wool at the very end is going to be the wool that attaches to the cup so roll it up really tightly you can felt into it while you're doing that roll it up really tightly because you want to get a nice solid uh, roundish handle so felt into it that will help to keep it nice and tight and keep going so that when you get to the other end you should have a good base of a handle you can always add more layers onto it felt it down add to it felt it down <clears throat> I'm going to use my three needle felting tool for this one because it really does need to be felted down really firmly extra careful with your fingers that's quite a force I'm putting onto my um, three needle felting tool but you do want a nice solid um, handle here mm -hmm. so it's not too floppy it, it won't be st that strong anyway but it will be it should be as strong as you can possibly make it with the combination of the core structural core as well as um, the wool that you're using and these bits here at the end they're um, just wool so they're surplus and they need to be there to fasten the handle onto the cup there. and felt it down from all directions keep rolling it to make sure you're not flattening it you want to keep it nice and round like a, um, a really firm little sausage I think after that cup you might need to take a break before you get to the pig because this is definitely quite a, um, a bit of work that you're doing here to get that cup done lots and lots of stubbing and needle felting and um, if you have to break the work down into smaller chunks do so because this is um, a lot of needle felting but a lot of fun so if you've got a lot of stored up um, frustration good way to get rid of it so now you're going to fasten on the handle um, so you probably wanted to slightly point up to start with get it felted on here at where the wool end is 
like that and then curve it round so that when you get to the bottom you have the chance to felt these wispy ends in. It does need to be felted down really well. I, you probably should, should work on it a little bit longer than I have um, if you want it to be a nice solid handle. Uh, you can still felt into it of course. There we go. That's the handle on. Um, you can also um, add more wool around the join, um, join here to um, strengthen the join of course. So if you do this just take <clears throat> small wisps of wool, lay them over the join and felt them down into both the handle and the cup. That's the point of covering the join. So felt that down. If the wool at the end of your felt strip um, isn't enough to fuse it to the handle or you want to have an extra bit of strength then you can do that too. You don't want to get hold of the handle and then it comes off. That sometimes happens with real cups of tea. Okay, so you've got a handle in on there now. Um, it's it's actually holding its own weight, so that's quite good. And um, short of um, working neater and making it um, a lot, can you still see this one is definitely thicker? So you could add more layers of wool, and I've I still have got so much wool left that is allocated for it. So you can still work on this even now, even if you um, have followed this and you haven't gone quite as um, uh, layered and as many as much bulk on there, you can still do that. And then, of course, um, you can start decorating it. Now, there is a pattern uh, drawn out here on the template just here. You can cut um, again, like I did earlier, cut out um, the pattern, you can lay it on there and draw around it. Or you can do you, you can try freehand. You do want this to be quite um, patchy at times because if you keep it patchy, um, it means that it looks more like a, a watercolor on your cup. So felt it down. Um, it's quite a symmetrical pattern, so it might be good to um, to definitely sort of do one side and then do the other side straight away. But you get the gist that you literally just felt into it. And of course also put your blue rim around the top of the cup as well. So you can just do that by just bit by bit stabbing it in as you go along. And the idea is that it is a, a little bit sort of wispy um, China cups when you look at them they sometimes look a bit washed out and that is because of um, how the paint um, um, has reacted um, obviously when it gets fired up in the kiln. <clears throat> so um, you can imitate that by um, working thinner and thicker with your wool and keeping it a little bit less perfect. However if you like perfect go for it. Um, you can do that too. And um, as you're stabbing this in, you might find it comes out on the inside, especially because I haven't made my cup as thick. Then of course you can cover it up again from the inside with uh, the spare white, uh, white wool that I still have got. But I think you definitely get the idea of how to make this cup now. So hopefully this has been a good uh, tutorial and yours may even look like this. Maybe it looks um, totally amazing in other ways. But um, this is how far I got with mine. This is where you're aiming for. If you've got any questions, then do get in touch with us. We're um, info at the makers with two s's.co.uk. And um, I can't wait for your little piggy to sit inside its little teacup. Um, so yes, do, do um, share your finished makes with us. Um, we are uh, the makers at the makers on Instagram. We are at the makers.co.uk on Facebook. We have our Facebook group, Every Wanna Maker, that you are very welcome to join and, um, and, um, and share anything that you're making, but also pop your questions there and hopefully we can answer them in absolutely no time. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon again. Bye bye.